Welcome to the Confidence in You podcast, designed to help you build confidence and create positive, lasting change in your life. And here's your host, Helen Luxford. Hi there, and welcome back again to the podcast. Thanks for being here to work on your self-esteem and confidence. 2022 was a busy year for most people. And sometimes when we get busy, we forget to take care of ourselves. So today's episode, I'm going to talk about self-care ideas. I'm going to cover six general ideas and then give you some hints and tips underneath each one on things you can do to exercise self-care for yourself. So the first one I really want to talk about is emotional self-care, because quite often this is the one that we don't pay attention to until we're really, really stressed or we get physically ill because we haven't looked after our emotional self-care. So some of the things you can do for your emotional self-care is just take some time to reset, to reset your central nervous system. And you can do this by just practicing breathing. It's so simple, so easy, and quite often overlooked as the effective tool that it is. And all you have to do is take a moment. You can just remove yourself from a social situation or remove yourself from being with others. Just find a quiet place. It could be in the bathroom. It could be in your bedroom. It could be in your car. It doesn't really matter. Find a nice, quiet place. And then you only need one or two minutes to do this. So you breathe in for four seconds. Breathe in slowly. One, two, three, four. You hold for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you breathe out for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if you find that four, seven, eight pattern is too long for you to hold your breath or to exhale for eight seconds, then just do three, five, six. The important thing is that you inhale for a big, deep breath. And as long as you inhale for, you exhale for twice as long to empty your lungs out and to reset yourself by breath. That's one really good way for emotional self-care to help you reset. Other ways that you could do emotional self-care is doing things that you find joyful. So you could do painting or sewing or knitting or playing an instrument or singing or dancing or writing or drawing or working out at the gym or doing exercise. Doing an act of kindness for someone else is also really good for emotional self-care. And affirmations are really valuable as well. So find some affirmations that you relate to. Simple affirmations that are phrased in the positive, such as every day in every single way, I'm getting better and better and better. Or hand on heart and just feel yourself and feel that I love, you love others, and I am loved, you are loved by others. And just sit and breathe in, hand on heart, And say your affirmations either out loud or to yourself. Number two is physical self-care. And again, in a busy world where we're busy, we quite often forget to do the exercise that is so important for our body to keep moving and to keep nimble. So physical self-care is fairly straightforward. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's physical. So you could do yoga, go for a walk, take a bath, just relax your body in a bath, do stretching exercises, have a little rest or a sleep and, you know, you could also eat healthy. So be aware and conscious of what you're fueling your body with. Is that food going to energize you or is it going to give you a short-term sugar hit or carb hit and then you will feel sluggish afterwards? Just notice when you're eating what food you're eating and is it fueling you or for longer periods or is it fueling you for now and then you feel drained later? Number three is intellectual self-care. And this is about learning something new. And it doesn't have to be profound. You don't have to become fluent in a language or learn rocket science. It's simple things like reading a book or watching a documentary where you're going to learn something. It could be going back to school and learning something new. It could be learning a language if that's your desire. Or it could be learning a new skill. Or simple things like doing a crossword or Sudoku, listening to a podcast like this one or others, 
or reading a personal growth book, anything that's going to help you learn something new. Number four is spiritual self-care. Now, spiritual self-care is activities that nurture your spirit and allow you to think bigger than just yourself. Spiritual self-care can be religious, but it doesn't have to be. But for some, it is a very big part of who they are. So if you have a church or a deity, then connection with them is really important. Connection with nature is also a form of spiritual self-care or connecting back in with self with quiet time, with just going inside internally through meditation or breath work or colour work or any of those things. It could also be giving to something that you believe in, a charity or volunteering or helping others. It could be cleaning up the area in which you're working or living. So tidying up the house or the garden or cleaning your desk, all of those things help with spiritual self-care. They're activities that nurture your spirit. They could be meditation or yoga or going to a place of worship, being in nature or dedicating time for self-reflection. It could be just smiling at yourself. It could be noticing that you are smiling at something external, a nature or children playing or anything like that. And you could create a vision board to help you visualize and look at, have something to look at and focus on for your spiritual self-care. So all of those things are good examples. Number five is social self-care. And social self-care are activities that nurture and deepen your relationships with the people in your life. So they could be friends, family, community groups, sporting teams, just the people in your life that you have relationships with. So examples of that would be spending time with your family, chatting with just a general person in the cafe, making a new connection. It could be brunch with friends. It could be going on a date. It could be making time or building into your routine a regular time that you call your parents, your grandparents, your aunties, your friends, the people that are close to you. It could be hanging out with your friends in any situation. It could be you asking someone for help. That's a really good way of social self-care because giving and receiving is really important. It could be planning an activity or a getaway with those close to you or having dinner together, a quiet dinner without interruptions. All of those things are good examples of social self-care. And the sixth one is sensory self-care. And when we talk about sensory self-care, we're talking about the five senses, sight, sound, smell, touch and taste. As adults, we quite often forget about these things because we're busy, we're living, we're just getting on with life. When we have small children around us and little ones in our lives, we are more aware of it because we're showing them things with sight. A loud sound might startle them, so we're acclimatising them to those. We get a flower or a piece of food and we ask them to smell it. The touching of things and learning the difference between something that is smooth and something that is wrinkly or something that is hard and then taste with their foods. Children quite often pick things up. They feel them, they smell them and they taste them. That's how they learn. And as adults, if we can connect back in with that part of ourselves, we get a much more enjoyable and rounded experience of life. So sensory self-care is just a really powerful tool. So by understanding the five senses and the different things you can do to activate in each of those five areas can make you just experience things so differently. So the things that we can do for sight or visual is you could draw or paint or sketch or just create something. You could watch a movie, read a book. Uh, you could just go outside in nature and view it or go to an art gallery or anything like that. So that's a good one for visual. And then we've got auditory, so hearing, listening, listening to music, listening to nature, the birds. Have you ever sat outside and had quiet time so nothing turned on and you just hear the birds or the sounds of the city around you? It's amazing when you stop and slow down and listen to what's going on around you, what you can hear differently. 
listening to uplifting podcasts is also a really good way. And tuning into your conversation and being present, having really meaningful conversations, focusing on what the person's saying before you form your response. And then we have number three, which is smell. My goodness, what a beautiful sense to have. Now, someone walks past you in the street and you smell what they're wearing, the fragrance that they're wearing, or you light a candle and that scent just drifts through the room, or you use essential oils and you smell different things, or picking up a flower. I quite often, when I walk past roses, just stop and actually smell the roses, and some of them have such a beautiful scent. Using different oils or gels in the shower or soaps that have different scents are really lovely. And you can use scented lotions on yourself, so things that smell nice as you're rubbing that cream into your body. The next one is touch. And touch can be touch through what you do for yourself or it could be holding hands with someone else or a pat on the shoulder, a pat on the back or having a massage. It could be you feeling the water as you take a lovely shower or have a warm bath and you're soaking in that beautiful water that's touching you. I had a massage recently and they did dry brushing on my skin and it felt amazing. Or it could be as simple as taking your shoes off and standing on the grass and touching and feeling and reconnecting with nature with just bare feet on the grass. It's so amazing. It is the best way to calm your nervous system down if you're feeling a heightened state or you're feeling a bit anxious or a bit stressed. Take your shoes off and just stand on the grass. Other things you can do is give yourself a hug. And you can do that by just crossing your arms across your chest and shoulders and just squeezing around yourself. Your body won't know, your mind won't know the difference between someone else giving you a hug and you giving you a hug. And again, it's a great way to just recalm, reset yourself. And of course, if you've got someone close to you that likes hugging, you can give them a hug. Hugs release happy hormones. And then the last one is taste. Now, taste is so great because you taste so many different things. We have the different parts of our tongue that give us those different sensations of sweet and salty and savoury and bitter and sour. So I encourage you to next time you're eating something that you really, really like, instead of just eating it without thinking about it, slow down and look at your food so you're seeing it visually. Smell it so you're smelling it. Touch it either with cutlery or with your hands and then practice mindful eating. It's a wonderful way to exercise self-care because it can make an ordinary meal into such a beautiful, enjoyable, mindful moment. And it's just being present and looking at your food. But when you eat it, sometimes I do this and I close my eyes and I slowly chew and I experience that flavor in such a different way so try mindful eating next time and see how you go going back and uh, experiencing childhood sweets is also or childhood treats or childhood favorites so it could be a hamburger or it could be a special treat that your mum or your grandma or someone else used to make for you having a snack that you used to have in childhood just brings back that tinge of nostalgia And it can just reconnect with you with past and make you feel happy inside again. Brings up those memories and emotions of being at friends' parties when you were young or sitting around the table with family and can invoke such joy when you eat a childhood, a favourite childhood snack. And the other thing about taste is exploring and trying different things. Again, we encourage children to try different things, but as we grow as adults, sometimes we get a little bit set in our ways that we don't like this or we don't like that. Now, I'm not a big fan of mushrooms or blue cheese, but I do occasionally try them out. I have a go and I taste them and I'm getting a little bit better with blue cheese. Mushrooms I'm still not a big fan of, although I can eat the little white ones on pizza now. So i I have come a little bit in that regard. So sensory self-care can be eating your favourite food, burning a candle, watching a movie, listening to music. Um, Just disconnect 
from socials, disconnect from technology for a few hours or a day, cooking a new meal, buying yourself some flowers, walking in the sunshine or getting a massage. Anything that's going to activate those five senses of sight, sound, smell, touch and taste. So they're the six areas I wanted to cover today. Emotional self-care, intellectual self-care, spiritual self-care, physical self-care, social self-care and sensory self-care. So thank you for being with me again. And I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Please share with family and friends and I'd really appreciate a rating on iTunes so we can share and connect with more people together. Until next time, let your light shine. Thanks for being here. Bye for now. Thank you.